Scott here. This is the glow plug controller uh, out of my daughter's uh, W164 ML320 CDI. Uh, this glow plug controller was used in um, you know, all the 3 litre V6 diesel turbo engines uh, in the C, the E, the, uh, the M series, the G series. Um, they have a, a common problem where they fail due to uh, the circuit board getting no 12 volt power supply. Now, here in Australia they cost about seven or eight hundred dollars, so it's a small fortune. They're very simple to fix. Um, I think it's a design problem, so I think it's worth doing this modification uh, to the control unit, and then you won't have any more problems with it. The actual circuit board seems to be okay. It's the actual power wires from the main power terminal here uh, that go and connect onto the circuit board. They're, the wires are made from aluminium. They're really soft, um, you know, low-grade aluminium, and they fatigue and fracture. So, perfectly good control units are being thrown out um, and replaced with very expensive ones uh, when it's very simple to fix this permanently. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Thanks. So I'm going to show you how to remove the glow plug controller. Very simple job. First thing just to remove the engine cover. Just pulls off. So this is the glow plug controller here. Very, very simple to remove. Uh, basically we just need to undo these uh, three bolts here. So they go into uh, threaded sockets and then you need to undo this one here which um, is a bolt with a nut on the end down underneath there. Um, you need to remove this pipe by squeezing in those uh, little tags on the side. You squeeze that in, pull it off and um, do undo this bolt here first which then allows you to get to that bolt and then just undo those two and pull it all out. Okay, let's put this back in. So, I'll we'll put the uh, connectors on first. Remember it goes upside down. And spray, spray those with some silicon spray first. Just makes it a lot easier to get them off. And get them off again if, later if you need to. And make sure that's clicked in properly. So, just make sure it clicks properly. So that sits there. Move this pipe off the down there. Here's the bracket. So the short bolt goes at the end there into the aluminium casting. bolt with the nut goes into this one here. And the nut goes underneath, just be careful not to drop it. So tighten this one up first. This one in. Push this tube back on, just snaps into place, and then put the engine cover back. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm just making a hole in the top right hand corner with the soldering iron.
Now the inside of the control unit is filled with a very soft um, electronic potting compound. It's usually made out of uh, polyurethane or silicon. Uh, so it's very soft and it's uh, quite easy to get out. Now what happens here is these three wires, these three aluminium wires here that take the 12 volt power um, from this from this terminal, uh, I'll show you here. Yeah, they take the 12 volt power from this terminal down to the circuit board. Those wires fracture, and they fracture right at the end here, where they are joined onto the end of the copper terminal. So, what we have to do is replace these three wires. Um, very simple to do. Just have to cut the material out of here to expose this corner. So we'll just um, make a, a cut down there and across there and pull this uh, silicon or polyurethane out. And then we have to file those three pads. We have to file the coating off them. They've got a zinc or aluminium coating on them uh, to allow the aluminium to bond. Um, but underneath that is uh, copper. So we just need to file that coating off. Um, we've got to make sure we don't interfere with this terminal here because that's an earthing terminal. And uh, after that change is made, you won't have any more problems with this because the actual circuit board is okay and it appears the wires um, that come from these pads and go off to the various glow plugs, it appears they don't have any problems. So it's it's only the sort of high voltage side and my theory is here's the terminal in here yeah my theory is that vibrations are transmitted along this cable that comes into this socket here it's a it's a very um, uh, heavy cable I, I don't know how many amps it is but it must be 50 amps or something like that but it's quite a solid copper cable coming into here, my theory is that high frequency vibrations uh, are transmitted through to this terminal so the end of the terminal inside here is you know vibrating um, constantly and eventually it just causes these wires to fatigue and they all snap uh, where they connect onto the, the copper terminal. So all will be revealed in a moment when um, we start opening it up. Now I've got a blade here I'm going to make a cut across here yeah so it cuts very easily and I'm just going making sure that I'm not cutting into the circuit board the second cut I'm just going to do that um, sort of down here along alongside the first of the low voltage wires. Now just using a screwdriver I should be able to sort of dig this out. Yeah it just comes out in lumps, it's uh, not difficult at all. Use a smaller screwdriver here to clean clean up around the actual wires. So you can see I've cleaned this up. Uh, I've got all this material out. I've exposed those three pads. They're ready to be filed down, and we'll also need to file uh, this. Uh, end of the terminal here because it has the same coating on the copper. Um, this material will not take solder so it has to be taken off. You also please take note that between these two pads here is a very small surface mounted uh, diode or resistor 
So you just need to exercise caution when you're filing off um, this coating and also when you're soldering onto those two pads there because you don't want to damage that. I've done the first one there, you can see the difference. So I've got all that coating off and I'm now down to copper. So you can see the difference between that and the other two. So that's the three pads all filed down, ready to accept solder. And now um, we need to do the end of this terminal here. So that's how the end of the terminals come up. All nice uh, bright copper. So next step is we will tin these four points here. So tinning means um, we'll put a coating of solder on them. Those three pads have been successfully tinned with, with solder as has the end of the terminal there. So I have some thin copper wire here that I'm going to use to make three new link wires to replace the aluminium versions. Now it's important to use copper wire of approximately the same uh, cross-sectional area. I have been told these wires also act as a fusible link so we don't want to put too heavy duty uh, grade copper wire uh, in place of the aluminium ones. Um, so I think this wire will be fine if there was a, a short circuit or a problem somewhere they would burn out as the aluminium ones would. So here's the uh, finished repair or modification. It uh, was quite easy to do. Um, what I did is I just used the long piece of wire and soldered that end on there first and then cut it to length. Um, I found that a lot easier. And I've sort of rooted this one around here so it's well clear of the earthing point there because we don't want that touching. And I think the wires are you know, approximately the same cross-sectional area as the aluminium ones, so we shouldn't have any problems if a glow plug uh, was to short. So now it's ready to test um, before I put the cover on, and then um, if everything's okay, we'll uh, put the cover back. Moment of truth. Dead cold engine, hasn't been started for two days. Put the key on, wait till the glow plug light goes out. Started first time, started perfectly. Now I wouldn't do that before. Okay, so it's time to put the cover back on this control unit now. So what I'm going to do is use the soldering iron to plastic weld in the corners there initially and then I will just use some silicon rubber to uh, you know go around the, the sides there and see I've got some polypropylene plastic here uh, to help me weld this the, um, the plastic used for this control unit casing is actually reinforced polypropylene. So there's the finished product all sealed up again. And I 
I just used a bit of uh, detergent on my finger and went over the uh, silicon rubber just to smooth it out. 